Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to today's video where I'm going to go over the number one profile for Lightning Conduit, which is around 260 million. The uh, reason you might be seeing me on this character is I actually recently made a Lightning Conduit character and I copied one of these profiles on. What's it called? On POE Ninja. And as you may see here, I actually only have three links on my lightning conduit. Now you might be wondering why would you ever only run lightning conduit on three links? And it's because my other two links previously and my lightning conduit is in what's it called? Thunderfist were not actually working. So I'm going to show the boss kill on this build with some really, really pretty much a three link lightning conduit pretty much because the skill actually does do incredible damage, but there are actually some links that don't really work with the skill. So as you see here, we finally made it to the boss and Blade Vortex actually works pretty well. And this setup I currently have going is immune to... What's it called? Is actually immune to... All right. So you can see, you can actually kill the boss pretty fast with just the three link lightning conduit. And the reasoning behind this is because I can't use hypothermia right now because my character is actually level 78. And I don't have Uber Lab done. And you also can't use Spell Echo. And we'll go over why we can't use Spell Echo a little in a little bit. But basically, the number one profile is 216 million plus DPS. And this is a level that's pretty much not really ever seen at this early stage of the league. Especially when Sentinel League has pretty much been nerfed. And like I said, I am currently playing Dory Ani's prototype. But I am using some shenanigans when converting all my lightning damage to cold. And... Cold and lightning damage to fire, so I'm not really taking any lightning damage. So all of the lightning damage I take is converted by temper by war, which is converted 50% to fire, and then the shield over here converts 50% of elemental damage to chaos. So I'm taking all fire and chaos damage pretty much. So we'll go over that in another video, but I just wanted to give a cool proof of concept video and pretty much illustrate why you don't actually need four links in lightning conduit if you just copy some of these PoE Ninja profiles. Now, it's always a very good idea to check out the high DPS PoE Ninja profiles. It's pretty much how most people, or I know, myself make builds. You kind of want to get inspiration from other people and kind of see what's actually wrong with their builds. So if you just sort it by here, you can see a bunch of people's profiles and we'll be able to see why is this guy so much higher than everyone else? Is he just a better player? Does he have better gear? Well, the answer is, we'll see. So in order to understand why Lightning Conduit does so much damage, we have to pretty much look at the skill itself. Now the skill has a ridiculous base damage and a high effectiveness of added damage. So the base damage is 516 to 1548. Now the best way to actually see how good this is, is to compare it to another skill. And I think a very similar skill is Arc. Now Arc is at 198 and 1122. Now you might think Arc is pretty good because it has 15% more damage for each remaining chain. However, Lightning Conduit has 20% more damage with hits per 5% shock effect on enemy. Now this character right now has around 65% max shock effect. So my character is pretty much the same because you have the 15% effect right here, maximum right here, and then you also have the extra 15... Wait, you don't have any extra part right there. So it's 50 plus 15. So it's 65% total. So at 65% total it is 13 times 20, which is 260% more damage with hits. So Arc would theoretically need to chain 10 plus times, right? And that's just something that's not really true. You can't really get 10 chains or you actually need more than 10 chains to come close to Lightning Conduit. And the base damage is lower. And if you look at the skill, it's 120% effectiveness of added damage. So this is what people mean by when they say a skill has been totally outclassed. So Arc, for single target, has been totally outclassed by Lightning Conduit. Now, you might be wondering, can I use Cast on Crit for this skill? Like maybe I can cast a spell in the trigger that makes it so the enemy is shocked. So the way that Lightning Conduit works, and usually most skills that have an incredibly high damage has some downside. Now Lightning Conduit's downside is that it can't inflict shock, and in order for it to do damage, the enemy needs to be shocked first. So if you do decide to trigger it, the spell's cast time is added to its cooldown if triggered. So the cast time is pretty much what you see here. So 0.30 is the cast time of Lightning Conduit. And this will get added to the cooldown. So you'll have a 0.3 second trigger cooldown. Now, 
this skill is pretty confusing because it does have an AoE tag. But what the AoE part of the gem is a circle that expands outwards from your cursor. Any shocked monster caught in the circle will be struck by a single target lightning bolt. And I misspelled struck. Whoops. But basically, the single target lightning bolt does not actually get scaled by area damage. So all of the AoE damage nodes you see on a tree don't really work. And most importantly, conk effect does not work. So if you see here, I put the thing down. And you'll see there's a little... You'll see that there's a cursor, the, the circle that expands out from the cursor, right? So here you can see it. So that's this part that gets actually modified by the, by the AoE. But this thing doesn't actually do damage. So the lightning bolt that comes out of the sky that doesn't get modified by AoE damage and area effect is the thing that actually does damage. So concentrated effect does not work. Now it's important to note this because if you go to POE Ninja, you go look at builds, you go look at lightning conduit, you will see that for some reason... 11% of the people are actually using conk effect and that's just completely wrong. It does absolutely nothing. Now next up we have spell echo. Now a lot of people think spell echo is able to hit the boss multiple times but if you put it inside of orb of storm so the way that a lot of people do it is they put down orb of storms and they pretty much cast lightning conduit and the cast of lightning conduit will make it so that it will apply the shock inside of the Orb of Storms and the enemy will get the shock removed and then you can repeat cast it again and the Orb of Storms will apply the shock and then Lightning Condor will remove the shock. However, this doesn't work with Spell Echo because it doubles the cast but it doesn't trigger the Orb of Storms to proc twice. So this means that Spell Echo is another gem that seems good on pop but actually doesn't really do anything. Now, this is really, really important because we're going to see what gem links this person that's number one uses. So sadly enough, 11% of the players on POE Ninja are just flat out wrong. You might be thinking that these people are all trying to just cheat, but some of these people don't even have high damage. So some people are just completely misinformed about the skill and I was pretty much one of them, right? I, that, that's why I was playing. I actually bought an Awakened Spell Echo. So I was pretty much a fool, just like everyone else. Now the number one profile is nice to see. We just go down to stats, right? So we have 216 million DPS and the cast rate is incredibly high, 12.89. If you look at ore stackers in the past with so Spark, they pretty much are around 10 or 9-ish. So this guy has insane cast speed. Now, something that people always wonder is Elemental Overload good enough to beat out crit? And the reason why crit is not that great for lightning skills compared to other skills is because of this mastery that gives you lightning damage with non-critical strikes is lucky. This thing is actually around like a 25% DPS boost. But I do think in a very, very late game, crit should always beat out non-crit. But however, it's a lot more investment. Now this person is running for auras. He's running Wrath with Divine Blessing, Zealotry, Herald of Thunder, Defiance Banner, Determination, and Petrified Blood. Now you might be wondering why is he actually Petrified Blood? And it's pretty much because he's actually low life in order to get 30% more spell damage when on low life. And that's called Pain Entombment. Now Eldritch Battery is being used, and I am also using Eldritch Battery too, is because this allows you to cast Divine Blessing. If you see here, I have Energy Shield of 1600, and the Zealotry thing costs 411 mana. So your Energy Shield counts as mana. So if I get 400 Energy Shield, then I can cast Zealotry. Mana. And am I actually running some weird link here on my Blade Vortex, which is Energy Leech? Not really sure how good this is. There's a 24% more multiplier, but this... Build is still in the progression stage, so I'm still working on it. But basically, Eldritch Battery is what allows you to get another 50% aura in. And if you look at this profile here, he actually has negative 200% lightning res. Now, negative 200% lightning res is needed for Doriani's prototype. And Doriani's prototype makes it so that the lightning resistance, the nearby enemies have the same neg uh, lightning resistance as you. And this actually goes all the way down to negative 200%. And negative 200% is actually the cap. Now you might be wondering, is this character a complete glass cannon? And it's really not. It has 32,100 armor and it somehow has 75% chaos res, which is something you never see from a top DPS profile. And it has cap res. So you can see here, his fizz hit is not the greatest. And the biggest problem is this guy is not running. Oh, he is running Molten Shell. So he, does have, he doesn't have cast when damage taken Molten Shell. But he has regular Molten Shell. And you can see nowadays that Path of uh, POE Ninja doesn't actually give you Vol Haste if you have it. 
not really sure why it does give you haste aura somehow huh, that's actually kind of weird but they don't really enable it so that's something nice that poe ninja does not actually get tricked anymore i'm not really sure what they actually changed for it but basically the character is not a complete glass cannon now in order to understand what this build does so much damage we should look at the gear so the gear you have wand and shield and they both have plus one lightning skill gems and an insane amount of cast speed we have the Dorianis prototype with a negative 200% lightning res for lightning pen. We have the helmet, which has the lightning conduit enchant and cast speed right here. So lightning conduit enchant, cast speed. And he also has AoE gems and increased AoE. And that does help out a little bit. Thunder Fist is being used for 100% increased effect of lightning ailments. So that makes it easier to get your shock up. So how like most elementalist build works is they scale this minimum shock effect from Shaper of Storms, which is always going to be 15% um, shock from your hits. So no matter how small your hit is, it will always be 15%. And then this 15% gets scaled by all of the ailment effect that you have. Now, this part is the next one that's the really big damage boost is jewelry with negative lightning resistance and cast speed. So you can see here, this is actually something that makes this build pretty much a once in a league thing is that you can reflect your jewelry and get negative. So this is double negative, so negative 96% lightning res. And then this ring here is negative 79% lightning res. And this makes it a lot easier to get your lightning resist to negative 200%. Now, grand spectrums are something that got recently added. We can get frenzy charges easily. So you have frenzy charge here. So this gives you three frenzy charges because it's per grand spectrum. And there's a limit of three grand spectrums on a build. This one's 15% increased elemental damage, which is pretty much 45%. And then you have another one here for another 45%. So those three Grand Spectrum Jewels are giving you three Frenzy Charges and 90% elemental damage, which is pretty crazy. Now, Lethal Pride is being used for this build. Now, most people use Lethal Pride because it gives you a lot of damage. Now here, no difference here. He is using 15% double damage. So 5% here, 5% here, 5% here, uh, wait, 5, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%. And this guy probably plugged it into Pob in order to find the number. Now, Watcher's Eye is also being used with cast speed and lightning damage. So every single build top end will always have a good Watcher's Eye. So he has a zealotry cast speed and a lightning damage wrath Watcher's Eye. And Cluster Jewels, he does run one Cluster Jewel. It's actually kind of an interesting build because most builds that have insane PoE Ninja DPS have run a lot more Cluster Jewels than one. And it might be better to, for him to get another Cluster Jewel. But without a crit build, the Jewel Sockets actually lose a lot of their value because usually for crit builds, you kind of want to stack crit multi on your Jewels. So you can get like 60-50% crit multi on one Jewel. But basically, he's just running this Cluster because it gets an increased effect of Lightning Ailments. And then Blind actually right here. And then he also has another lightning damage node. And then he has overshock, which is lightning damage, increased effect of lightning damage ailments. So overall, he has a lot of increased effect of ailments and lightning damage. So overall, his gear is pretty good. Oh yeah, he also has the lightning damage enchant if you haven't killed recently on a boots. And in terms of flash, he is using bottle fave, kind of cheating with the increased effect. So Jelen's flash, he has 70% increased effect. So this is also another cheating thing. Because anyone who uses 70% increased effect and they can't gain flash charges is not really realistic. And this one is a life flash and granite flash here. And a quicksilver flash for reduced effect of curses. So the amulet, you can also get plus two lightning skill gems, which is what he has. And his ring actually has negative 25% reduced damage. And he does have some, he has one Hypnotic Eye Jewel, which gives him a bunch of cast speed and a bunch of flat lightning damage, which is really, really good. So overall, his gear is honestly, it's good, but it's not really the best in the world. Like if it was the best gear ever, he would probably have plus one, plus one right here. And then he would have a tier one spell damage roll and double damage on the shield. And his helmet is good. But overall, he could get definitely get more damage. He could also get a plus four amulet, but that's probably really rare. This ring has 39% cast speed, and this one is probably the best in slot for damage. So overall, some little bits of improvement, but pretty capped out in terms of gear. Now, next up, we have to look at how you actually scale the damage, and this is something that a lot of people don't really understand what's going on. So the way you look at it 
is damage is always your base damage right here. So this is where he gets his base damage from. He gets awakened out of lightning damage. And then he also has some flat damage to spell lightning spells on his wand. He has the boo enchant, which is the lightning damage if you haven't killed recently. He has the flat lightning damage from Valico Sign from the Implicit. And then he has Herald of Thunder. And then he has his Abyss Jewel. And then this base damage is added with the base damage of Lightning Conduit, which we saw earlier. And then it's multiplied by the increased multiplier and then the more multiplier. The difference between increased and more is that increased is additive. So all of these spell damage stuff from his wand, from his tree, from his jewels and his gem. So all of that stuff that he has for increased spell damage, area damage, lightning damage, the sulfur flask, this is all additive. But the more multiplier, however, which is from the 260% from the Lightning Conduit Gem, the 20% from Arcane Surge if he's using it, Hypothermia, 30% more multiplier, Pain Attunement, 30% more multiplier, 25% from Zealotry, and I actually didn't actually change the gems to what he was using, so let me change it back. So you can see here, you would have 40% from Conk Effect, and then negative 10% from Awakened Spell Echo, so you can see here, if you multiply all of these things, they're not additive. So that's how you get 1140%. So then you multiply the base damage with this multiplier and then this multiplier. And then Frenzy Charges, you can see, is 12% more. So that's why Frenzy Charges are so important. So the whole name of the game is pretty much to stack as many more multipliers as possible. And increased multipliers lose their effectiveness the more you actually have. And that's something very, very, very important when you learn about scaling damage. Now in terms of cast speed, he has a bunch of cast speed, 280% cast speed, and this is pretty much because of his tree and his rings, right? His ring has 39%, which is an insane amount, and 26% on his amulet. The jewelry does have a big impact now on cast speed, and his wand has 32%. You could even use a profane wand if you really wanted to, and 9% on the cast speed that he crafted. And then, it's pretty much, you multiply all of these things together, lightning base damage, with the more multiplier, increased multiplier, and then the cast speed. And this is, I really want to stress this part, because a lot of people always ask me, how does a build get so much damage? And it's all about multiplicative scaling. The base of every single high DPS build is pretty much stacking as many more multipliers as possible. And that's why an aura stacker does so much damage, because the aura stacker is scaling aura effect on a more multiplier. So you, you have Wrath on the Aura Stacker, you have Zealotry on the Aura Stacker, and you even have Hatred. And the Hatred is actually double dipping because it's converting and then it's scaling. So Lightning Conduit is kind of a special case. You can immediately see why the skill is so good because this skill has a 273% more multiplier that you're able to scale with. So already this skill is out of control because of its more multiplier when you have Max Shock. So you can see here, these are just the multipliers that you have again conk effect awaken control is actually 45 percent and you think that's pretty crazy right well wrong because this profile looks like it has no cheating at all and it has plenty of mana and energy shield left to cast which is pretty nice you have eight unreserved mana but you have a bunch of energy shield with eldritch battery now the gem links however tell a different story like I said in the past lightning conduit does not work with conk effect even though it shows that it works on pop it is actually a very, very, very misleading thing. So if you actually untake this, it's a huge damage loss. So you can see here, it's 260 million. We untake Conk Effect, and it goes down to 153 million. Controlled Destruction is also never, ever used with Elemental Overload as it makes your crit chance too low. So if you look at Elemental Overload and what it says, it says skills that have dealt a critical strike in the past 8 seconds deal 40% more Elemental damage. However, if you don't have elemental, if you have constant or not constant control destruction, you have a 4.92% crit chance. So that makes it, it's almost impossible to crit and trigger elemental overload. So in terms of awakened control destruction, we can untake it. You can see here, the crit chance goes from 4.92 to what's it called? To 24% right here, 24.6. So we have to uncheck that and it goes down to 100 million DPS. Now, Awakened Spell Echo is not really usable as you will not apply the shocks fast enough. This guy is using Storm Brand. So if you look at the Storm Brand hit rate and cast rate, 5.51, 7.8. And you look at Lightning Conduits, 
cash rate of 12.89 with Awakened Spell, Spell Echo. You can see that Spell Echo is definitely not going to work because usually you could probably cheese it with Orb of Storms, but even with Orb of Storms, you cannot use it with Awakened Spell Echo. So that's why Awakened Spell Echo should probably be replaced too. So you can see here, even with three links on the skill, it's still at 64.8 million DPS. Now the best gem links you could possibly use are Hypothermia, Arcane Surge, and you probably need the Zealotry Arcane Surge Watcher's Eye in order to trigger this, and Awaken in Power. But after all of that, you can see here, it still is 156 million DPS roughly, and that's still an incredible amount. So overall, you can see here how I got baited personally. Like I was just copying these profiles, and I was putting in Awaken Spell Echo. I actually spent like six divines on this gem. And I was using cock effect before, and yeah. Never ever copy PoE Ninja profiles without looking at a lot of different options. Like, please just look at the skill gems, because you can see here that Awaken Control Destruction should probably never really be used either, but 54% of the people are actually using it somehow. Oh wait, is it that many people? No, it's um because I have cock effect selected. So you can still see 20% of people are using Control Destruction, and 13% of people are using Spell Echo, 11% of people are using Concentrated Effect, and those links pretty much do nothing and probably hinder your damage. But Lightning Conduit is a skill that pretty much does infinite damage with proper scaling, and especially Doriati's prototype. And I do think that the skill's single target rivals Spark, but I do think Spark at the highest end for Aura Stacker probably outclasses it just because of duration scaling. Now, Doriani's prototype can actually complete negate lightning dots. Like, I can take this character and go do Eradicator, which immediately kills Doriani's prototype builds normally. But you just have to build around it with the new shield from Ultimatum. And Grand Spectrums are something I really, really enjoy. It's something that adds a lot of endgame customizability. You can also get Grand Spectrums that get you ailment immune. And it's just a very, very nice way of helping out your character and rounding it out at the endgame. And it's also a pretty much a chase item at this point because I think the Frenzy Charge Grand Spectrum costs around like, I'm pretty sure it's like 9 Divines or something. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope this has helped out people who are considering trying to play Lightning Conduit. I will release an update to this build in a next video. But this should just warn you real fast about always being able to check the profile and trying to figure out why a skill is doing so much damage. A lot of times, all of the top skills at PoE Ninja, if you sort it by DPS, are probably cheating in some way or using gem links that really don't tell the whole story. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, exalts, and mage bloods than me. And see you next time. Bye.